There may have been a chill in the air for a little while now, but winter officially, obviously meteorological winter starts at the first start, start of December. Today, though, is officially the start of winter. It's marked by the shortest day of the year, as in shortest amount of daylight. Very specific about this. We're not allowed to say shortest day, are we? Because oh, everyone will say, well, every day is 24 hours. There's no such thing as the shortest day. It's the shortest amount of I'll daylight. I'll say shortest day. I'll field the complaints. Now, it means it's the winter solstice, and that is when crowds flock to Stonehenge to witness the remarkable alignment with the sun. Let's take a look at how it's looking right now. The sun rose not very long ago, just a few minutes ago. And there is this moment where it kind of appears through the stones. Mm. It, there, it's such an evocative place, isn't it? Such an atmospheric place, Stonehenge. I don't know if you've, people have ever been to visit. I've been a couple of times, but let's talk to a man who knows it really well. His name's Wynne Scott. He works for uh, English Heritage. Wynne, morning to you. Thanks very much indeed for joining us this morning. Um, what was it like that moment when the sun peaked up about 20 minutes or so ago? It really is magical. It's a wonderful time of year. Actually, although it's blooming cold here at the moment, there are thousands of people here. Um, that this is the time when you really feel that sort of connection to to the planet, if you like, you know, to the to the ground. And thousands of people are here, all enjoying that moment. It's uh, it's inspirational. And there's still really that sense of mystery about Stonehenge. What were people thinking when they built it? What was it really meant to signify? But the theory goes, doesn't it, that it is actually the winter solstice that was perhaps the more important reason rather than the, the big sort of summer moment that's there. Tell us what you believe, really, about why this was all, well, hauled up a hill and massive stones erected so many years ago. Yeah, yeah the big stones go up in the 26th century BC. Um, and uh, we, we now believe that they're actually aligned on the winter sunset, the solstice sunset, as opposed to the summer solstice. And we've got evidence from archaeology of that. Uh, nearby, that we've found um, thousands of pig bones where they were feasting on them in the 26th century. Um, and those pigs are eight months old, and they're born in the spring, so we know that they're eating them uh, at midwinter. So, yeah, we've got lots of evidence for this being the most important time of the year. Of course, you know, when they want to perhaps make sacrifices and do the rituals, but also dance and celebrate. Thousands of people would come here from probably all of all around England, we know that they're coming from as far as Devon and Wales to come here to feast and dance. And this is young families who are travelling long distances to come here for the winter solstice. Um, that was the most important time when they could try to renew the year, the coming year, start making the days go longer again. Uh, interested to see people around the stones win, because those who visited will know more often it's people are kept back these days and not able to... to do, do you take the barriers down, the, the, the little rope down, so that people can actually be amongst the stones on this day? Yes, yes. English Heritage is very keen to welcome people at it for, the, for these solstices. Uh, it is a wonderful time, but it is when we take the barriers down. Um, most of the time, people can't touch the stones. Well, we encourage people not to touch the stones now because there are really delicate carvings on them and there are lichens <laughs> on them. So we hope that people look after those uh, those stones as, as best they can. But um, there's a terrific energy going on right now. I don't know if you can hear the, the drumming and the singing going on behind me. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's wonderful. We're really pleased that English Heritage should be welcoming these people here. Um, when, what kind of crowd is it that shows up? Uh, I'm from down south, but I've, I've never been to Stonehenge. I've not reported it, the summer solstice or winter solstice. Um, is it like lots of people who subscribe to paganism? Is it tourists? Uh, what kind of people are there? It's everybody. It's very diverse. And uh, there are many different types of pagan groups. And there are people who come and sing. There are people who come here and do rituals, people doing drumming, but many other sorts of people who are just here uh, for the curiosity and to get that connection uh, with the ground and, and with this extraordinary place. I mean, we're lucky today. It's actually uh, a very gentle breeze and it's sunny. But, you know, it is the middle of winter and, and people actually make a bit of a sacrifice, I think, to come to get up so early. You know, most of these people have probably got up at about three o'clock this morning just to make it here. So they, they made the effort. And it really is magical. It's, 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 it's a bit like celebrating Christmas. It's something special you do in the year.
Not not quite as early as you had to get up for the summer solstice, though. Hey, at least the winter one, you get a little bit more sleep if you want to come and see it. Um, all right, well, we will, thank you so much for bringing us a little bit of the atmosphere today on the winter solstice at Stonehenge. Thank you, Winscar. Yeah, the summer solstice you, is great, isn't it? Thanks, Win. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's like four o'clock in the morning, isn't it? And people are yeah. there so early, ready, ready for that. Um, yeah, and it always amazes me how they, you know, the, the transportation of those enormous stones yeah. across great distances, and then what to actually feat. lift it and get it onto and to get it in exactly the right spot, exactly. for the alignment with the sort of astrological aspects. They knew what they were doing, didn't they? And they didn't have any calendars or iPhones. Uh,